day, everyone. A very exciting time for us here as we launch the revolutionary AFL player ratings brought to you by Vero, exclusive to AFL.com.au. Now, have you ever found yourself in a dispute with your mates about who is the best player in the AFL? Well, we've worked with Champion Data to create the most accurate and in-depth rating system which measures the performance of every player in the league and ranks them against each other. The man who is the brains behind our player rating system is Carl Jackson from Champion Data. Welcome, Carl. It's great to have you here. Thanks. This has been a, re a really big project for you. I know you, you've been working on it for many years. So what is it and how does it work? Yes, as you said, we're trying to find out who the best player in the competition is. So what we're doing is we're looking at a two-year rolling window, and within that window we look at every player's most recent 40 games to measure their performance. Now, is it fair to compare it to the rating systems that we have had in place for years for golf and tennis? Yeah, so it's the same concept where it is a rolling window across seasons, uh, but obviously those being individual sports and this being a team sport, measuring the players is a little bit more difficult. And these are some of the key things that you're looking for. Effectiveness, location on the ground that a uh, particular uh, point of play took place, uh, the amount of pressure that the player was under, and distance gained towards goal or away from defensive goal. Uh, it's, it's a pretty complex little system you've designed here. Yeah, so it's all about the players that are improving the position of their team. They're the ones that are highly rewarded. All right, let's take a look at some pieces of play and, and we can just talk through and, and look at where points are gained and where they're lost. Yep, so you see here, Paddy Ryder wins a hit out to Joe Watson. Both players get points there. Watson hits up early just inside 50. Now moving on uh, Hurley kicks the ball inside and this one is about to go red. What's that all yeah, about? Yeah so Hurley gets a negative for that just because his kick was to a marking contest so it gave, gave the opposition a chance of winning the ball back. Yep, and and Bill Shannon just wins the ball out of the contest and kicks the goal so he's heavily rewarded for that. Alright let's take a look at another position of play out of defence. So again we've got a Shannon Hearn kick in. He gets points for that. So, in the white is obviously positive. Yep, Schofield kicks long. Hill gets a tap out to Lacroix, and Lacroix kicks long to get, get a goal. So, Lacroix, Lacroix's goal is worth 3.9 points for the team out of the six total gained. All right, another piece of play here, Henderson. Yeah, so Henderson kicks into Jacobs. Jacob takes an uncontested mark on the arc, and you can see here it kicks across the ground to Matty Wright. And it doesn't gain any points for that because yep. the position of the team hasn't been improved. Right. So that's just zero points, inconsequential. Yeah. Now this one is negative. So this is another contentious one. So Matty Wright gets a negative points here, handballing to Ricky Henderson on the run. Um, just because he had the ball in set position, Henderson then gets the ball uncontested, so there's a chance that he could get tackled. So the, the position of the team is slightly worse than when he had the ball. Yeah. And these are, we're talking about very finite points here, yeah. aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, Henderson kicked the ball to a contest. Sloan gets the ball out of the contest, so he gets the one point for that. But he has a shot at goal. It pulls up short, and Andrew Walker takes an intercept. So Sloan gets a negative for the kick, but his overall contribution is still in the positive. All right, so there you go. That's a basic explanation of uh, a few pieces of play and where points are won and lost. Now, what about if your player misses a large batch of games, like Lenny Hayes, uh, for example, or, or Dane Beams from Collingwood? Yeah, so because we are rating 40, 40 games across two seasons, the players that do miss games through injury and suspension are, are hurt a little bit. Um, we're not taking into account every player's game, so the fact that we are only using 40 gives a little bit of a buffer for players to miss a couple of weeks. But Lenny Hayes has only played 27 games in the, in the current system, uh, current two years. So once he starts playing games this year, he'll start climbing through the rankings. All right, now, high disposals, so, you know, that's what in... I guess stats that we've looked at over the years, it's always been about disposals. But in, in, in this case, it's not all about disposals. It's high disposals don't necessarily mean much as we look here at this comparison between uh, Cyril and Swan. No, we're putting context on the disposals now. So rather than just a flat count of how many times a player's touched the ball, we, we're measuring the value of every, each one of those disposals. Yep, and so uh, let's talk about this now, first of all, with Cyril Rioli. Yeah, so Rioli, as we saw, only had 18 disposals for the game, but most of them are positive, and he does a lot of a lot of his work in the forward half. So you can see he's winning a lot of the ball contested, he's laying tackles, he's kicked a goal here. So his highlight highlight reel is pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. What's some of the highest scoring you can get? Yeah, so winning the ball out of the contest and, and a long kick would would be the sort of standard best best play that you can get. So a contested mark and a long kick where you're gaining metres for the team. 
Yeah, let's look at Dane Swan here now. Uh, we've got to say, he, he did have 42 touches in the match, but we're just looking here at what he did wrong on the day. Yeah, so it's it's still a good game by Swan. So if you take his positives and add all those up, he's he outscores Rioli with his positives. But it's just that, obviously, with a 42 disposal game, they can't all be effective. So he's had a few... You see coming up here, he's just missed a shot at goal, kicked it behind. He had a couple of turnovers as well. So those cut into his points one from the positive disposals. All right, so that's uh, that part of it. W what about in terms of where a player is on the ground and how that influences the points that they either gain or lose? Yeah, so as I said, it's all about the position of the team. So the closer you are to goal, the more valuable the points are. So effective disposal in the forward half is, is valuable, as well as winning the ball off the opposition behind centre. Yeah, and then once you're there, in terms of where you kick the goals from, that is also crucial. Yep, That's definitely. also another key element. Let's take a look at this with a couple of examples, beginning with Jed Adcock from the Brisbane Lions. Yeah, so as you see, Jed Adcock's just taken a mark just inside 50. He's had a shot and kicked the goal. So for that, for his contribution for, with that kick, he gets 3.1 points. All right, now let's take a look at this one with Max Bailey. Okay, we see Roughhead take a mark, similar position to Adcock, kicks the ball in to Bailey, and Bailey kicks the goal. So Bailey, Bailey gets 1.2 points, Roughhead gets 2.1. So the, the team team value is roughly the same as what it is for the Lions, but it's just breaking it up into, into how the players actually contribute. Yeah, and actually giving credit to the player that assists in the goal. Yeah, so the guy that kicks long to the goal square is going to be highly rewarded as you know, a guy taking a contested mark. Yeah, be the same, but just kicking a goal from the goal square is not worth as, as much as one from further out. Yeah, absolutely, and a strong focus there on um, on setting up um, teammates, isn't it? I mean, yeah. that's 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 a, that's a big part of it. Yeah, just moving the ball. All right, let's take a look at this incident now with Campbell Heath. Uh, this vision now is Campbell Heath. Yeah, so this is looking at the value of disposal. So Heath's kick just fell short there, so he still gets a positive 1.1 points. Compare that to the Christensen kick now. He's actually found the mark, so he gets 2.1 compared to yeah. Heath's 1.1. And so getting reward for going into the contest and, and, and having a crack, and that's rewarding players as well. Yeah, so it's winning the ball and, and finding targets with the kicks. All right, let's take a look at this now. So we can value different possessions differently. So here Jonathan Brown takes a mark on lead. So Ash McGrath and him both share the points for the team's gain. Here we've got a kick into the corridor, player taking an uncontested mark. So the player taking the mark doesn't get any points and DeBoer gets the full 1.7 points there. All right, now this one is a negative. Let's uh, take a look at this one from down in Tassie. Yes, yeah, so this is the same as the Hurley kick earlier on. Lee Adams kicks the ball to a marking contest, so he lose points, loses points and Cunningham gets the 2.1 points for taking the ball out of the contest. Yeah. Now, another key part of these player ratings is that you can break down into positions. Uh, how do the, the big guys get rewarded? Yeah, so the Ruckman are, are winning the ball out of the, out of the stoppage with hitouts, obviously. Um, so we see here Hampton hitting the ball out to Robinson. So he's getting points for that. Robinson's getting points for winning the ball as well. But on the flip side, winning the hitout, but Lenny Hayes sharking it off Munford. So Munford's actually getting a negative for that hitout. So... The, the reward for a hit out to advantage is, is more than the punishment for a hit out shark. So it is rewarding the guys that, that are consistently getting the hit outs to advantage. All right, now let's take a look. Uh, let's, let's kind of zero in on a particular piece of play. This is Lewis Jetter in the 2012 Grand Final. Now, despite getting just 12 disposals and failing to kick goal, he was the 15th highest rated player in the game. Yeah, so it's a point we've been harping on a bit, but the, the, the metres gained and improving the position of the team is, is massive. So as we can see here, a lot of his touches, he's breaking out, gaining metres, which is sort of what he's known for. Effective kicks into the forward line. And just reward for his possessions more so than a high volume. Yeah. And why do you reckon he's so good? It just is that. like The fact that he's, he can use his pace to break out on the, on the, uh, behind the opposition defence, it's easy for him to gain metres that way. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting that, that part of the game done, isn't it? It's yeah. getting the job done. Exactly. It's the slingshot for you that the Swans play, and he's playing his role by getting out the back, and he's, he's doing it pretty well. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's take a look now at a couple of other stars. These are some of the, the higher-rated players uh, in the game, according to the ratings which are being released. Let's have a look now, first of all, at Nick Nananui from the West Coast Eagles. I was just saying to you as we were looking at this before we came on, uh, watching Nick Nananui every day of the week is entertaining. Yeah, so he, he comes out with the ratings as the number one ruckman in the competition, which some people might not agree with, but the all Australian selectors from last year certainly will. So uh, Nat is the kind of guy that does everything as a ruckman. He 
one of the best tack ruckmans in the game, and he puts contested possessions up numbers numbers up every week that are up there with the elite midfielders in the comp. And you say he's the best ruckman in the league, and despite the fact that he did miss a little bit of footy at the start of the season, that hasn't impacted. No, it hasn't taken away from his rating because he still does have the 40 games across the two-year period. Yeah, so that's the uh, the critical thing here with Nick Nadanui, who uh, is just everywhere on the football field, as you can see. Uh, he, that, I mean, that was that was a bit like a midfielder, that little yeah. uh, little piece of play there. Let's uh, take a look now at Daniel Wells from North Melbourne. So again, Daniel Wells is one that might surprise some people. The Vero player ratings has got him in the top 20 in the competition, and it's just his his ball use forward of centre. He wins a lot of the ball contested and on the outside as well. He's a good user by foot, kicks a lot of goals and has a lot of score assists as well. So he's highly rewarded in the system. Yeah, we've got one more piece of play, I think, to look at uh, from Wells as he moves forward now. Um, and in terms, of, um, in terms of the role of your teammates, I mean, how does that influence someone like Gary Abler, who we're looking at here? Uh, does, does that have an impact in his overall score, do you think, or is this really based on individual performance? It's purely based on individual performance, but obviously it does depend on, on how good your teammates are around you. I mean, if your team can't win the ball, it's less likely that you're going you're to get much of it. Gary Abler's the exception, of course. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the Suns play goes through him, so he does have a lot more opportunities. Yeah, and he is the number one player in the competition according to the ratings. Yeah, and by a long, by a long stretch as well. Yeah, so he's gonna he's going to hold on to that mantle. You would suggest for quite a while. You would think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is the uh, the, the last piece of play from him, and as you can see there, two point two points for the, the handball. Look, it's it's really is quite complex, isn't it? But it's it's fascinating. We hope that we've helped you here just by breaking it down and, and, and having a look in a little bit of detail about how the system works. You've done a great job, Carl. Congratulations. I know it's been a, a really big project for you. Thanks, man. Um, stand by now for everyone to start talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, some of the feedback's more positive than negative. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Really appreciate it, Carl Jackson, with us from Champion Data. Now, if you want to find out more about the official AFL player ratings. Go to this link, afl.to slash afl ratings. You can find all the rankings as they currently stand there. You can also sort by position or look at the overall rankings. We also have uh, some videos for you there in the hub and a more in-depth explanation of the system and how it works. This really is exciting stuff. It's a whole new element to our game, really. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.